Welcome to 1031 University. I'm Paul Holloway. Today's topic is a reverse 1031 exchange. Every other video that we've done so far assumes selling first, buying second, but what if a taxpayer wants to buy the replacement property first and then sell a relinquished property at some point in time in the future? Is it possible to reverse your thinking and actually buy first, sell second? The answer is yes. And what we're going to attempt to do today is go over a list of 10 steps to complete a reverse exchange very efficiently and very securely. So a few terms to get familiar with right up front before we start getting into the steps. First and foremost, this is allowed by Revenue Procedure 2000-37 in the year 2000. The IRS did come up with a revenue procedure that gave safe harbor guidance for anyone attempting to do a reverse 1031 exchange. You may want to share that citing with uh, your CPA or tax attorney. We're going to use the term a SPE, which is a special purpose entity. Uh, that will end up being the title holder on the parked property that is being held until that relinquished property is sold. The term EAT will be used, which stands for Exchange Accommodating Title Holder. That will be the role that Accruit would play, for example, in a reverse exchange process. We're going to use a few facts on this transaction. We're going to assume the taxpayer that wants to do the reverse exchange, his name is Bob. So just to keep that simple, and Bob wants to lock up a replacement property in Texas first before he sells his relinquished investment property in Arizona. And we're going to assume that this replacement property that Bob is going to go after is worth 500,000 and that the Arizona property will be 400,000. So at the end of the day, when he sells Arizona and buys Texas, he'll be buying of equal or greater value. So that's just a few cleanup notes here to start this process. So first thing that Bob needs to do is to actually put under contract Texas and what Bob is going to want to do is make sure that that contract is assignable because prior to the closing of the Texas property, Bob will need to assign that contract over to a new LLC formed that will be referred to as a special purpose entity because Bob will not be allowed to buy that replacement property before he sells his relinquished property. So first of all, Bob puts Texas under contract. It is assignable. And now Bob needs to go out and form a special purpose entity. We will just call that entity XYZ LLC. Typically it is an LLC that is formed and Bob uh, w can form that entity or a crew it could assist in forming that entity. Uh, but uh, who is going to be the manager and the member of that entity? That would be accrue it during the reverse exchange process. So the special purpose entity, XYZ LLC, the manager and sole member of that LLC will be accrue it exchange accommodation services, LLC. So Accruit owns that property and is camping title to that for Bob until he can actually get Arizona sold. So that is, uh, we are up to step two, uh, where now we will put together the paperwork that under Revenue Procedure 2000-37 would be the reverse exchange agreement, also commonly referred to as a QE, AA agreement, which stands for Qualified Exchange Accommodation Agreement, one in the same as a reverse exchange agreement. As a part of that paper trail, there are multiple pieces involved, but long and short, it is a contractual agreement between Bob and Accruit for Accruit to hold Texas for Bob until he can get Arizona sold. And then as a part of that agreement, we agreed to sell that property back to Bob for him to complete a standard forward 1031 exchange. So as a part of the QEAA agreement, after we get that signed, the next step in the process would be for the taxpayer to assign uh, the replacement property over to Accruit 
uh, through the special purpose entity. So what Bob will have to do is prepare an actual assignment form that says that, yes, I own the contract right now as Bob, but I'm going to go ahead and buy as XYZ LLC, of which Accruit Exchange Accommodation Services will be, once again, the sole managing member of that LLC. This is where we will step in and actually buy that property for Bob. Now, we are not going to front the money for Bob to buy that property. So what Bob needs to do is either A, have a strong cash position to where Bob can front the money to accrue it so we can buy the property and it's perfectly acceptable for him to do that or Bob can go out there and get financing from a bank. What the bank needs to realize is, is that during the reverse exchange, uh, even though the loan was approved for Bob, that Accruit Exchange Accommodation Services through XYZ LLC is the owner of the property. So we will be signing the loan documents, everything as if we were the true owner. Now Bob can actually guarantee the loan, perfectly acceptable for him to do that as well, and the lender more than likely is going to ask him to do that for a, an additional guarantee. Now, how we protect Bob if he fronts the money to us, let's assume that it is a cash purchase and Bob is going to give us $500,000 to buy the property. We will protect Bob's interest in the property by giving him a non-recourse promissory note of which that note is secured by a pledge to actually assign a 100% membership interest in XYZ LLC back to Bob, so Bob will ultimately be the owner of that property once he gets Arizona sold. So that is how Bob's interest in the property and his cash is protected while we were holding that property for him. So uh, other parts of the QEAA agreement or reverse exchange would be that we will put together an agreement that we will sell this property that we're holding title for Bob back to him once he actually sells his Arizona property and then we will get to that contractual right at uh, a further point. We may also ask Bob to uh, uh, do an environmental agreement. If it's a commercial property and there's potential environmental issues, we just need to make sure that our interests are protected as well as the XYZ LLC if there are any environmental interests on the property. While we are holding that property, Texas for Bob, Bob will want, definitely want to collect rents, leases, everything as if he is the true owner of the property and we don't have any issue with him doing that. But what we will do is put together a master lease, a triple net type lease to Bob, which would allow Bob to actually step in as the landlord and actually handle all rents, leases, collect payments, hold on to them, just as if he was the true owner of the property. And in lieu of paying us any rent, since he is the tenant, uh, through the triple net lease, Bob will agree to keep any mortgage payments current, property taxes current, and handle any other debt obligations against the property. So that is uh, how Bob will be protected and how he will be able to collect rents and leases moving forward. Now we are at the point of the exchange to where we close on this property. So the title company needs to know that Texas, once again, is assigned to XYZ LLC, of which Accruit Exchange Accommodation Services will sign all the closing documents as if they are the buyer. Bob will send the money that is needed for the closing directly to the title company, and we will sign everything, and then we become the owner of that property. This is where the clock starts running on the reverse exchange. And the clock is identical to a standard forward exchange in the sense that you have upwards of 180 days to complete the reverse process. You technically have from point of purchase where we're at now, 45 days to identify up to three properties that you may wish to sell to start the exchange. 
we know that Bob is going to sell Arizona, but if he has a couple other properties in his inventory that he may wish to sell, he could put them in there as well and reserve the right to sell any one of those three. Then he would have an additional 135 days to put under contract and close one or more of the properties that were identified. But once again, we know that Bob wants to actually sell Arizona to start the forward exchange process. So we own the property through XYZ. Bob needs to start putting under contract and closing Arizona. So let's assume that uh, Bob has uh, actually sold Arizona and now we are doing a forward exchange in the sense that if, if he sells that property he is going to through another intermediary or possibly accrue it set up a standard forward exchange agreement stating that he is selling Arizona and now we know what he's buying he is buying back Texas that we are holding for him so that's where that initial contractual agreement between XYZ LLC and Bob will allow that property to be put back on him to complete the forward aspect of the 1031 exchange. So the forward exchange agreement is put into place. The qualified intermediary that is holding those proceeds will be directed through the assignment of contractual rights to transfer all of the proceeds from the sell of Arizona to uh, the EAT, Accruit. So Accruit now can either pay back Bob for any money that he fronted, that being the $500,000, or if he got a mortgage against that property with the bank, we may be instructed to pay off or pay down the bank as well. But either way, the proceeds from the sell of Arizona will be used to buy back Texas. So now that we have uh, the reverse exchange rolling and that we are going to be dispersing the proceeds uh, to pay back Bob or pay down the lender, that would almost formally complete the 1031 exchange. The final step would be, how do we get Texas over to Bob? We have one of two choices we can either assign a 100% membership interest in XYZ LLC, that Bob will be the 100% manager and member of XYZ LLC, which is okay from a 1031 standpoint, because with the same taxpayer requirement, if Bob sells Arizona, Bob is the single member and manager of this LLC, so that would satisfy the same taxpayer requirement. And or uh, the other route would be if Bob doesn't want to take over this LLC, we could be instructed to quit claim deed the property from XYZ LLC over to Bob, and now Bob is the owner of the property under his individual name. We would then disband the LLC and Bob would be the new owner of that replacement property and that does complete uh, hopefully a, a list of steps to do a reverse 1031 exchange. One note that I failed to mention on this is when we actually take title to that replacement property, that being Texas, we also need to make sure that Bob does put forth some form of homeowner's insurance on that property. What we wanna make sure of is if anything happens, like the, fire, the property burns or there are any issues with the property, it does need to be insured while we are holding that property and the insured needs to be XYZ LLC. Bob can be listed as an additional insured but uh, we definitely need to make sure that the owner XYZ LLC is insured as well during that period. So once again, this has been 1031 University and this was a reverse 1031 exchange. It is possible to lock up that replacement property first and when you're in a hot market, that may make sense when you're competing against a lot of other people that are looking for limited inventory. If you need to lock up that property first, follow these steps, get a hold of Accruit, 
and we would be more than happy to walk you through the steps again. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any comments, please leave them at the bottom of the video. Thank you so much.